Today I'll be discussing neonatal intensive care units and the cost of care that goes along with those. I first would like to present the two NICUs that I will be discussing in this presentation. Hi, my name is Laura Conkle. I'm the clinical nurse specialist in the NICU at American Family Children's Hospital. We know that having a baby in the NICU can be a stressful time for families. We would like to show you a tour of our unit so you can become familiar with our space. At the NICU entrance, you will first stop by the greeter's desk. Here you will fill out an infection control screening on a daily basis. Next, the greeter will ask you to do a two minute hand wash. Both of these things are done to prevent infection in your baby. A typical NICU room is divided into three zones. The first zone is our patient family zone. In this zone, you'll notice that we have a sofa that can pull out into a sleeper. This is a place where parents are welcome to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In addition, we have personalized breast pumps for every mom to use while she's in her baby's room. To provide for privacy, we do have a curtain that mom can pull if she desires. One other feature in the parent zone is that families have private space to store your belongings. One of the cabinets is able to be locked and secured. Each room is equipped with a refrigerator where breast milk and formula can be stored. Each room also has a private bathroom for families equipped with a shower. The second and most important area in our rooms is the baby's area. This is where we take care of the babies. The first thing I want to highlight is a special bed. This bed is called a radiant warmer. We have a couple of special beds that help to keep a baby warm while we're monitoring them closely. Another common piece of equipment that you'll see in your baby's room is an IV pole with IV pumps. This is how we deliver fluids and medications to your baby. Another thing that you will see in your baby's room is a bedside monitor. This monitor will monitor your baby's heart rate, breathing, oxygen saturation, and blood pressure. We can see this while we're in the baby's room as well as when we're outside of the baby's room, so your baby is always being monitored. Finally, the last piece of equipment that may be used with your baby is a piece of equipment called a ventilator. This machine helps us provide breathing support for your baby. The third and final area of your baby's room is the staff support area. This is where your nurse and other members of the healthcare team will be caring for your baby. We consider parents to be the most important part of our baby's team. We value and respect your input in your baby's care. One of the ways that you can be present in your baby's care is by being here when we conduct bedside rounds. Bedside rounds is when a group or team member of healthcare providers get together to discuss the plan for your baby for that given day. This typically occurs in the morning hours in the NICU and our team will go from baby's bedside to baby's bedside. During rounds, you're encouraged to ask questions, voice any concerns, and speak up. Rounds can consist of many team members. Don't be alarmed by the size of the team. Each member has an important role in planning the care for your baby. Another item in your baby's room is a whiteboard. This is basically a place where we communicate what we're doing with your baby on a given day. You will see your baby's providers listed on the whiteboard. In addition, we will update you on things like your baby's weight gain, things your baby likes and dislikes, and we ask that you help us complete this board. This is the family lounge. It's a place where you can come and relax. It's also a place where you can enjoy a meal. In the family lounge, we have some beverages and snacks available to you. In addition, we have separate bins for each family. You can bring in your own personal food items if you wish. There is also a sibling play area. An additional space in the family lounge is a room with computers with internet access. We know that having a baby in the NICU can be a very difficult time for families. We want you to know that we will be here the entire time to support you through this process. If an emergency arises with your baby, or if your newborn needs specialized care, he or she will be admitted to St. Mary's on-site neonatal intensive care unit for close monitoring. Neonatology specialists and neonatal nurse practitioners are in-house 24 hours a day. At St. Mary's, we practice patient and family-centered care. That means our healthcare staff are partners with you, working together to best meet the needs of your baby. Hi, I'm Molly. I'm a nurse in the neonatal intensive care unit, and I'm proud to show you where we care for our most fragile babies. Our NICU provides a quiet, healing environment for babies and their families. Our single patient rooms offer a peaceful and private space for each family, and special rooms for twins and triplets allow newborn siblings to be cared for in the same room. For visitors, we have a lovely family waiting space, which includes a coffee machine, TV, computer, Wi-Fi, and a play area for children. 
We encourage you to be with your baby as often as you can, day and night, and we hope that you'll hold your baby as much as possible. We endorse kangaroo care, which is a method of holding your baby so that your skin is in contact with your baby's skin. As a result, the baby is likely to have an improved and more stable heart rate, which leads to improved oxygen levels. Babies who receive kangaroo care experience longer periods of sleep, faster weight gain, and more rapid brain development. You will also benefit because it's a great way to be close to and bond with your baby. Breastfeeding offers similar important benefits, but sometimes babies in the NICU are not able to breastfeed immediately. We will work with you and your baby to begin nursing as soon as possible. If breastfeeding must be delayed, we will help you to pump breast milk for your baby's needs in the future. Because breast milk has nature's perfect nutrients and helps build your child's immune system, there's nothing more important you can do for your NICU baby. Should your baby require an extended stay in the NICU, families may wish to take advantage of our Ronald McDonald family room located just one floor above the NICU. This makes it easy for parents to spend the night and stay close by. The Ronald McDonald Family Room has many amenities and provides a place for families to regroup and recharge without leaving the hospital. St. Mary's NICU serves as a regional referral center, which means that hospitals throughout South Central Wisconsin turn to our NICU experts when they need advice about a patient or must transfer a newborn to receive our expert care. Our in-depth knowledge, experience, and compassion will be the cradle of care your family needs. So there are four NICU levels and we'll be discussing each one. So level one NICU is basic care. This provides care for healthy full-term babies and they also stabilize near-term babies to be moved to specialized facilities. Advanced care is a level two NICU and they offer care for babies born after 32 weeks and babies recovering from more serious health problems. Level three NICUs are specialized care and they care for very sick babies and offer access to a wide variety of pediatric specialists and equipment such as x-rays and ventilation support. The babies in the nurseries are generally born earlier than 32 weeks or have critical illnesses. Level four are highest level care. They provide the highest level of care and they have a full range of healthcare providers, including pediatric subspecialties, specialized nurses, and equipment to care for very sick babies. So the first hospital that we talked about was American Family Children's Hospital. This is a 26 bed state of the art level four NICU in Madison, Wisconsin. It is one of only two level four NICUs in the state. This unit provides services to premature and full-term neonatal infants requiring complex surgical interventions or a subspecialty medical care found within a comprehensive children's hospital. Typically, such babies are born with multiple medical anomalies and or require immediate surgery to survive. Complementing the world-class care provided by UW Health neonatology physicians, nurses, and staff, the level four NICU is designed to provide op optimal healing for baby and maximum comfort and convenience for the family during what can be a very stressful time. So the cost of care at American Family Children's Hospital has three different levels for our NICU. And I included the standard day rate just to kind of make it a little easier. And the standard day rate for the children for the NICU at the Children's Hospital includes the room that you're in as well as the nurse that's taking care of you. And so when you're considered a level three patient, that cost is going to be $6,214 a day. If you're a level four patient, but your nurse has another patient that she's also taking care of, so we call that a one nurse to two patient ratio, that cost is gonna run you $9,438 a day. And if you're a level four single patient, which means that nurse is only taking care of you, that cost is gonna be $11,914 a day. There are also extra costs that go into a NICU stay. And hospitals will have a master charge list available for families to see the charges for certain procedures and medicines. And I included UW Health master charge list for different things that could happen during your stay. 
St. Mary's is a level three neonatal intensive care unit and offers state-of-the-art technology as well as comfortable private rooms for families to bond. The rooms are designed for families with multiples. They also have respite spaces in the NICU and a Ronald McDonald family room. Faster, more efficient lab testing equipment, high-tech draft omni beds, and they're able to care up to 38 fragile newborns at a time. Neonatologists are on site 24 seven, NICU nurses, respiratory therapists, and other caregivers support baby's growth and development, and also teach families how to care for their newest members. St. Mary's Hospital also serves as a regional referral center. Hospitals throughout South Central Wisconsin turn to their NICU when they need advice about a patient. So the cost of care at St. Mary's can vary depending on the size of your baby, as well as some of their issues. So I have been able to include the average prices that a family will typically see based on their baby's weight and diagnosis. So as you can see, babies who weigh a little bit more and have a little bit more um, issues that they need to take care of, that cost is going to be um, around, you know, between 30 and, you know, 60, $80,000 for your entire stay. Whereas a baby who is on the lower end that may require um, a little extra help are gonna cost a lot more just because they're gonna be there for a lot longer. They have a lot more care that goes into a patient who is under you know, four pounds. And then also, if they do need to transfer some of those smaller patients, you're gonna see another higher cost because it's gonna include the cost of transporting um, that patient. I have also included their cost of care list. So if you wanted to go look at that. And all hospitals are required to have transparency with their cost of care. So most of the time you'll be able to either contact the hospital or look on their website for their cost of care and how much different procedures will cost. So how do you decide where you want your baby to be taken care of. And there's lots of factors that go into it. But some ways that you can decide is to take a tour of the NICUs in your area. You can also talk with friends. You could have friends that have also had patients who, are, who had to have a NICU stay. And you can discuss with them their experiences at the different facilities. You can also discuss with your doctor. Your doctor will be able to give you a good insight on what kind of level of care your baby will need when they come into this world. You can also talk with your insurance company because lots of times your insurance company will have options for you on where you're gonna get the most coverages with doctors and providers that your child will need to be seen with. Us, for example, when our son had to stay in a NICU, we didn't really know he was going to stay in a NICU, and he actually had to be transferred to another facility because he was born in a level one NICU, and he needed a level three NICU care at first, and then he actually needed to go to a level four. And so we didn't really get to decide the hospital took him to the closest one that they could get him to, um, which was fine. We were super comfortable with where they ended up sit sending him, but we also immediately called our insurance and we're like, we had to send him here. Do you guys cover this? And they were able to give us all the information that we needed. So when it comes to paying for hospital bills, there's a few different routes you can go. Your normal health insurance is gonna be your best option. They are going to be able to cover a lot of the costs that come with a NICU stay. And so just 
just discussing with them about your options on paying those bills is a great option. There's also something called emergency Medicaid. An emergency Medicaid cannot be applied for ahead of time. It is designed to meet sudden clinical medical needs, and most people realize that they need this benefit only after an emergency occurs. So hospitals and clinics can offer assist assistance with the application process, and to apply, you will need to provide most recent pay stubs, bank statements, valid identification, and proof of residency. And for children needing emergency Medicaid benefits, the eligibility determination is generally based on the financial criteria of the parents or the legal guardians. And so that's one thing that we were able to apply for because our insurance covered a lot of the cost, but there are some extra costs that we would like to, that we needed covered so that we didn't have to pay for those. And that's where emergency Medicaid really helped us. And I was able to backdate, once we got it, we were able to backdate to his birth so that they could cover everything from his birth all the way through his stay at the hospital. There's also a program called the United Healthcare Children's Foundation. They offer grants to families who have um, children with medical needs that they need help paying for bills for. And that's an easy application process that you can go to their website and you fill out the application right on the website. As an administrator in a cost of care facilities, there's lots of things to consider. So I've included three photos um, of pretty much the different levels that you need to consider. So as you can see the first picture, that's a lot that's going on. So there's monitors hooked up to the patient. Um, we can see that there's a ventilator, there's multiple um, IVs and line access on this, on this patient. So things that we'll need to consider is because this patient needs more critical care, the cost of care for this patient is gonna be higher to the family. And same with photo two. We see in photo two, there's lots of IVs and syringes that are working on delivering medication. And each one of those, uh, each one of those pieces of equipment costs money. And as we see in the last picture, we don't have any respiratory support going on. There's leads that monitor the baby's heart rate and oxygen levels, as well as a feeding tube that allows this patient to get the nutrients he needs. So we can see that as an administrator, we have to consider that in this first two pictures that level of care is gonna cost more than the last picture that we see. And that's where coming, that's where making sure that our unit is running properly and that each day we're evaluating the care of each patient to make sure that the cost of care is the right cost for that patient. One way that we can do that is we could have cost of care ratios. So we see that for the intermediate care, that's patients who are progressing towards going home. So they're on limited um, like oxygen support, they're stable, they don't have any central lines, which are like pick lines that doesn't include like IVs because most babies will have, have some, tort, some type of IV up until they discharge. They're also able to eat well on their own or using a feeding system like a G-tube or an NG-tube. Our intensive care level will include babies who need more respiratory support. They are on CPAP or they're on uh, higher than a liter of oxygen. They have some central lines like a PICC line or a UBC. They're requiring um, TPN or continuous feeds. They have positive blood cultures, congenital disease, just things that need, you know, that next level of care. And then we have those intensive care single patients. These kids are usually on a ventilator. They've recently had surgery. They have complex medical conditions that just need that 
higher extra level of one-on-one -on -one care. And that's how American Family Children's Hospital, this is actually our, how we determine the cost of level of care is with these options. And here are my sources. So that's my presentation on NICUs. Feel free to ask me any questions that you guys might have. I work as in a NICU as their unit coordinator. And so I'm doing a lot of the paperwork, a lot of just maintaining the unit and making sure that those cost level of cares is correct for each patient. So feel free to ask any questions. And that's all I have.